Well, I haven't worked for Garstington for a few years now, and it's a marvellous place to work. It's just a delightful atmosphere generally, and the, the team working there are fantastic. I love doing revivals of my own shows because you get a chance to get it right, <laughs> whereas you might not have got bits of it right before. But also you rethink, and you have um, better ideas, and then you have a different uh, cast, as we have some of the old team and some of the new team. So new ideas come in, and I'm always very open to new ideas rather than being rigidly, no, no, we did this last, I always forbid this in the rehearsal room. Well, it's very interesting to do productions again because, you know, you're, you're, you're in it already. You don't have to start from scratch. Um, there's a certain amount of recasting, which is always interesting. And um, we have Sarah Tynan in the role of Purilla, the, the main soprano. And she's a fantastic artist. I'm really looking forward to doing a Rossini role with her. But mainly we have the same cast and it'll be revisiting it and maybe doing it better because we all know it better. And that's always a good, an enticing prospect. Well, the characters in this opera are very, um, they're very likeable stock characters in a way, sort of commedia dell'arte type, um, uh, henpecked husband, flighty wife, handsome young uh, guy who comes into the picture, um, ardent second lover in her life who sort of pads around in the background all the time. Uh, the, the situation is, is like a sitcom in a way. It's, a, it's sort of like a stock situation, but then lots of different sort of themes come in. Um, and so it's, it's funny. It's a very funny opera. It was a huge success, the production, uh, when we first did it in 2011. I think that it's a, a less familiar comedy of Rossini, so people have fewer expectations of it. But at the same time, they can understand it well because it's, you know, the genre is clear. So I think it has all sorts of advantages from that point of view as a piece. It seems fresh, and I think that's what made it a big success. What was fun for myself and the designer Francis O'Connor was this was the first production in the new house at Garsington at Wormsley. So we're using the width quite a lot with this um, big sort of postcard of Naples in the background and there are a couple of surprises happen it's got little it's a bit like an advent calendar things happen and because we have to do set changes but of course as people might know at Garsington there's no wing space you can see everything it's very open so Francis is very very clever at uh, doing these adaptable multi-changing sets um, so there are a few surprises in it yes all of Rossini's operas have uh, a very different atmosphere, even though formally speaking they're quite similar. Um, and he manages to make a, a different kind of overall feeling through the music. And this one seems to me to be extremely brilliant and witty um, and light. Of course it has this very interesting and unusual idea of the drama being set up by the poet, a meta-theatrical idea of the drama being set up by the poet. Um, and I think that's probably the that's probably the sort of motive to have this music so sort of brittle almost. Um, I'm looking forward to very much working with um, the Garsington Chorus, who will be a different team that I had last time, because what's great about the Garsington Chorus is they're fresh, they're very young, <laughs> um, not very experienced yet, so they're keen, which is fantastic. There is a sort of um, uh, a willingness and a vibrancy that's uh, very enjoyable to work with. Well, there are all sorts of things which are wonderful about doing Rossini at Garsington. Um, of course, the orchestra and I have been working Rossini since 2002. Doing it at Wormsley is a real treat, actually. It's one of the best acoustics in the world, let alone in the UK. Mm -hmm.